Did you know Mog antibody disease can present in three different ways? In this video we will discuss what are the most common ways Mog antibody disease can present and the symptoms of each one so you know what to look out for. Recognising a Mog antibody disease attack or relapse and seeking medical help quickly can give you the best chance of stopping the attack and having a good recovery. The first Mog antibody disease presentation you need to be aware of is optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is when one or both of the optical nerves in the eye becomes inflamed due to the myelin surrounding the nerves being damaged. This can occur in one or both eyes at the same time. A common symptom of optic neuritis is pain in, around or behind the eye that can get worse when the eye moves. Other symptoms include vision loss, which can either be temporary or permanent, depending on the nerve damage. Vision loss from optic neuritis can present as a loss of central vision and or peripheral vision, colour or visual acuity, and some people also report seeing flickering, flashing or sparkles when moving their eyes. Whilst vision loss is usually temporary, in some cases it can be permanent, and tends to take hours or days to happen, but weeks to improve. Optic neuritis is the most common MOG antibody disease presentation amongst adult patients and is reported to be reoccurring or affecting both eyes in approximately 50% of all cases. Additionally, up to 50% of patients complain of a headache either around the eye or at the front of the head a few days before the vision is affected. The second presentation of MOG antibody disease is transverse myelitis. Transverse myelitis is when the spinal cord becomes inflamed, causing interruptions to nerve signals sent from the brain to the body, which can create a variety of symptoms. The effects transverse myelitis has on a person depends on which segments of the spinal cord have been damaged. Symptoms tend to develop over a few hours or gradually over a few weeks. The main symptoms of transverse myelitis are pain, loss of or abnormal sensations of the body, weakness of limbs and bladder and bowel issues. Transverse myelitis in MOG antibody disease is often severe with partial paralysis of lower limbs which require a movement aid and or bladder dysfunction requiring catheterization at the patient's worst point. MRI scans of spinal cord inflammation caused by MOG antibody disease tend to be longitudinally extensive spanning at least three spinal cord segments, although shorter lesions may also be present at the same time. Acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, also known as ADEM, is another presentation of MOG antibody disease. This is when segments of the brain are inflamed due to MOG antibodies. ADEM tends to display symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, nausea, decreased consciousness, fever and vomiting. In severe cases of ADEM, seizures and a coma can also happen to a patient. In up to 3% of ADEM attacks can require patients needing to be given ventilatory support. An ADEM or ADEM-like attack is the most common MOG antibody disease presentation in children, but can occur at any age. The white matter of the brain is often targeted during an episode of ADEM, and symptoms tend to present quickly. ADEM can often be misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis, due to the similarity of symptoms and the appearance of brain inflammation on MRI scans. But just having symptoms of a MOG antibody disease presentation is not enough to be diagnosed with the condition. MOG antibodies will likely need to be found in either a patient's blood or spinal fluid in order to confirm the diagnosis. If you want to know more about antibody testing for MOG antibody disease, then check out this video here.